Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to run your tests on EC2. Uh, before we start, we need to make sure that we have all everything in place. We need to do we need to have three things. Uh, we need to have a PEM file that you can get from the EC2 dashboard. When you when you uh, download it, you can just save it anywhere you want. I usually save it in EC2 folder and then you have to change its uh, file permissions to just 400. Uh, then we need to have a secrets file that has easy to access and secret keys. Uh, you can find a template file here. If you open it, you will see that there are just we are just exporting two system variables. Uh, okay, so you can use this template file. You can put these uh, keys here, or you can just create a copy of that file and change its name to something like that. My username is just JK. So I'll change the file name to JK underscore secrets. If you run this on Jenkins and you, the Jenkins user is just Jenkins, then ch change it to Jenkins underscore secrets or anything that matches the username. Okay, uh, so uh, let me just put my secrets, uh, my keys uh, to that f into that file and I'll get back to you in a second. All right, so I just put my uh, keys there. I won't, sh I won't show you these keys because uh, that's not nice to uh, look into someone's config files. Um, all right, so that's point number two. And last point is to have a, 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 a jmeter ec2 config file. So there's already one file here called jmeter ec2-eu properties. If you open it, you will see that's just a regular config file. I don't change here much. Of course, you can change and play with it. You can just use different AMI that suits your needs. Um, you can change the instance type. Uh, you need to remember to configure the security group, provide its name here, and then provide the key pair name here, and of course, point at the right PEM file. And you need to provide all the other details. You have uh, everything explained here, so I think I shouldn't uh, spend much time explaining it now. Uh, one thing that you have to remember, just uh, go to remote host uh, property and make sure that it's empty because it might just uh, harm your test. Okay, so basically that's it. We have the config file. <coughs> so now let's go back to the console and now let's run the test. So uh, I will run the test in the debug mode. I will use the standard first test plan. I will use the config file, that one, the one that I just showed you, and then uh, I, pr I'm, I will pro here I define how many instances I want to spawn. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I will just do, I will create just four uh, for virtual machines. Uh, as far as I know, uh, you can create up to twenty uh, T1 micro uh, instances. Um, if you want to, you, if you need to create more, probably I think you have to use um, uh, more powerful machines, and of course you have to pay more for running this test. So, yeah, we have this uh, configured, and now let's run the test. So now, um, G script is requesting four instances from EC2, uh, and it might take a while uh, before all the instances boot up. Uh, usually uh, it takes up to four minutes. Um, I know it's long but sometimes it's worth waiting. Um, okay so let me pause the video and get back to you guys later. Okay uh, so it took uh, um, more than three minutes to spawn all the hosts. Now the script assigned all the tags and now it's copying all the all the uh, files to um, uh, to all the instances, then it will upload all uh, the uh, test plan, config files, um, data files, whatever you have in your uh, projects folder. So uh, just in a second we should see that a script will run the test. Um, I'm so, oh, sorry, uh, now it will, uh, before it starts to run the test, it will install all the dependencies. In this case, it will uh, install uh, Java, uh, Jmeter with all the plugins, a uh, few small tools like uh, zip, command, command, 
a bzip2 um, and I, I, I maybe grep I don't even remember um, but it usually takes a while uh, of course you can uh, create your own AME uh, that will have all these tools already installed uh, and then you can just change it in the config file to, to use that uh, file and then run the, the test with uh, additional parameter called setup uh, and you have to set it va its value to false then the script won't try to install anything uh, on the remote machines and it will uh, assume that everything is already configured it, it, this might be handy I usually don't do it I just prefer to have like a clean installation every time um, and uh, yeah so this is going to take a while uh, to install everything let me get back to you once that uh, once I'm done okay okay guys so I missed the bit when uh, the uh, script uh, started to execute the test uh, so um, once all the dependencies were installed the script just run the run the test it lasted for like a minute so we won't see much here in the um, uh, status uh, updates then uh, of course the script downloaded all the result files uh, terminated all the instances uh, calculated some basic stats sorry uh, yeah we calculated some basic stats then um, processed all the um, result files uh, and finally just started to generate our HTML report file and of course the uh, graph files um, so um, if you go to the results folder the projects the results folder you have the um, uh, HTML report the standard thing if you go to the uh, performance graph you will see the performance graph from the first EC2 node if you scroll further from the second third and the fourth node so uh, thanks to this you can figure out how many requests per second you can generate using the, for example the free t1 micro instance um, okay basically that's it I think something went wrong during the test run so if you need to figure out what happened just go to this file and then have a look at all the <coughs> uh, error files so ah something went wrong uh, one of the URLs didn't uh, I think it didn't Jmeter couldn't reach that, uh, that, that that URL ah okay um no, exactly that's it so sometimes if the uh, endpoint is unavailable or something you will you will find these errors here if you need more details just go to the uh, result file you will see information about all the all the requests um, of course if you if you want more even more details you can uh, just go to the um, zip files uh, that contains the resu result files from uh, just a specific uh, node and if you go for example to errors XML file you will see more details about the error in this case we the, the uh, one of the er uh, endpoints were where was was unavailable so it's actually it's nothing nothing bad uh, yeah okay so that's it we just run our test on ec2 uh how cool was that yeah 